All right, Glover Quinn joins us here on Shep in the Morning from Summit, Mississippi, where you now hold a football camp for young kids. How important was that as you knew you were you know, embarking on your career that you wanted to do something like that and give back to your community? Uh, it was very important to me. Um, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't have a, a camp to go to when I was a little kid. And so when I, when I got in the league, I wanted to have the opportunity to give back to the little kids and, and be an example in, in the community and, and get the community involved with, 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 with our youth. And so, um, you know, I was able to, uh, to make it out and do something uh, positive with my life. So I just wanted to be an example for the little kids and let them know that they can do it too. What's it like there? And how did you, you said you made it out. What, what did you have to make out of? What did, why, why did you have to get out? Why do people have to make it out of Southern Mississippi? Well, it's, it's a very small town, um, real small. Um, I mean, the economy is not great. It's not like a lot of money. You know, it's, you know, it's just, a, I mean, you can just live a, a normal life, you know, just a average, just, you know, go to a factory job or go to a, you know, teaching job and get off and you go home and, you know, you just live an average life. But um, I wanted to do something more than that. I mean, I wanted to, I wanted to live a great life. I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, and see what the world had to offer. And I knew in order for me to do that, um, I had to, I had to leave. And so my whole, my whole goal, my whole time was find a way to get out, go to school, find a way. And I knew I wanted to play ball, and so I just, I just started when I was real little. Originally, you wanted to be an architect and then a sports trainer. Where did the architect vision come from? Why did you want to be uh, somebody who designed buildings and things like that? Well, I mean, when I was little, I, I knew architects made a lot of money. <laughs> and so I always wanted to make a lot of money, and I, I thought it was kind of cool designing stuff. And so I was like, man, I think I want to build architect. And that's when I was real little. And my mom was like, you sure you think you want to sit behind a desk drawing all day? And I was like, nah, that ain't me. So then I was like, you know, I love sports, doctors, all that stuff. I love, I love, you know, the anatomy of the body. So maybe I'll be a sports trainer. I always be around sports. And, you know, they make good money. They get to travel. They go outside. They go to practice. I was like, so that would be cool. And, um... Uh, then when I started getting into the, the major classes, I was like, man, I'm not really interested in this stuff, man. I want to, uh, I want to know about business. And then I got to, you know, getting closer and closer to the NFL. It was more like, okay, if you're going to be playing in one of the, the biggest businesses there is, you probably need to understand a little more about business. And so I, uh, I eventually settled with business. But uh, I was always, I was always set on making a lot of money, some kind of way. Do you enjoy drawing? I know Calvin Johnson's a big artist. He's a big guy who likes to draw. Do you still draw with from your architectural no, desiring days? No, I, I wouldn't. I would have never been the drawer. I'd have always been the vision. I'd have had to have somebody to draw it out for me. I'd have had the vision to to see what I wanted, what I was what what I thought would be nice. Mm-hmm. But I'd have had to have somebody else to draw it. Did you always envision Glover Quinn envision? playing at this level and and did you ever envision when you first started on your NFL career that you would play here um I always wanted to make it to the NFL um obviously a lot of kids probably do and as you continue to go throughout your career you start to realize how far of a dream that is and then sometimes you can realize how close of a dream it is you know I mean if you you know, as a kid, you want to play professional football, but then you get to middle school and you can't even make the seventh grade team. It's like, okay, probably not going to be a professional football player. But if you're good in middle school, then you get to high school and you end up being a, a star in high school and then you get a chance to go to college, you're like, okay, it's getting closer and closer and closer. And then you go to college and you get, you know, the, the recognition that you want. I went to JUCO first, and so I was able to go to – a D1 school and just I just continued to grow and the closer and closer I got to it the more and more I could see it and envision it but um you know when I got drafted to Houston you know I can't sit here and say that I ever thought I would be playing for Detroit um I I felt like I wanted to be one of those players that you know go to an organization and 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 do everything I could to to stay there 8 10 12 years that's what probably everybody dreams of if if especially if you're drafted you know, you, you always feel like, you know, this team took a chance on me, you know, when I was a, a, a rookie. And, you know, I, I, I want to show my loyalty to that team. And, you know, so I gave I gave everything I had. I gave a lot. And it didn't work out that way. And so it's like four years later, 
you got to go to the next loyalty, the next team that wants you. That's where you got to go, and you got to give your loyalty to them and uh, hope you can finish your career there. How, how is the Lions camp, how do the Lions in general, different than the Texans, if at all? Um, I mean, I would say a lot of it is the same. For I mean, scheduling stuff is different. Um, tempo, tempo is a little different. Um, points of emphasis and doing certain things is a little different. You know, but scheme is different. But I mean, playing NFL football and you know going to training camp and getting and getting the work in, it's gonna it's gonna be the same in a lot of places. The, the reason I ask that is because we had a really good debate earlier this week about do you learn how to win? I mean. You knew how to win in Houston. Can you pass that along to people who maybe aren't quite so used to winning? And it's not like this team doesn't have individuals who have won. There's guys who've experienced success. Well, I, I, I will say you can learn how to win. My second year in Houston, we went 6-10. and 10. We started out 4-2, and two, went to our bye week, and then the last, you know, 8, 6, 10 games, we went 2-8. and eight. We went 6-10, and 10, and in those, in those, that last half of the season, we found ways to lose the game. And once you start losing mentally, it's like, here we go again. And you find another way to lose the game. And then when you start winning, then you find ways to win games. And it, I feel like it's a mindset. It's an attitude. It's, a, it's um, you know, when, when you do things the right way, you know, you do things the right way. When you do things the wrong way, you're doing the wrong way. So when you practice winning at everything you do, then you find and learn how to win. And do you, I think do that you, carries over. Do you like the fact that you're viewed by many as the guy who has stabilized, solidified a secondary that many people feel was the weakest part of this team? You, Chris Houston, Louis Delmas, but he's not always healthy. You have been viewed as that type of, lack of a better word, savior for the secondary of this club. Um. I mean, I, players say it too. I mean, players talk about your professionalism and how how you prepare and how they learn from you. I mean, I think I think I take pride in my job, um, and I obviously feel um, like you know when you go through free agency, a team has a need and and they bring somebody in to try to fill that need. And so I was a guy they brought in to play safety, and, and you know, my goal is to to be the best that I can be to to provide you know some stabilization. That last year, I think they had. Uh, 13 different starting lineups in 16 games, you know. The, the best way to be good in, on defense and in the secondary, you got to have continuity. you got to play with the same guys every day, the same guys every game, because you start to you start to mesh and gel and you become just a, a great unit. And um, But, uh, yeah, I take the challenge. You know, I, I don't mind. I don't mind that. I mean, I put the... Uh, I put the, the, the weight on my shoulders, and uh, I, I carry the load and try to be that guy that's, you know, going to gonna be the staple, going to be the, uh, you know, I don't want to say the savior, but um, just the guy that's going to come in and try to uh, elevate the play in the secondary. Just a couple more. Well, what has impressed you most? What has Glover Quinn witnessed mostly about this Lions, even though it's early, that has impressed you most about this team? Um, we got a bunch of guys that are talented and hungry. And I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier. It's about, okay, we have the guys that are talented. We have the guys that are hungry. Now we got to learn how to win these games. I mean, last year you lose, what, six or seven games by seven points or less or something like that. So we got to find a way to win those games. You know, when we're, when we're up by five with four seconds to go against Indy, we got to find a way to win that game. You know, when, even against Houston, when, when you're in those situations, you got to find a way to win those games. And so that's what you got to do. You, you got the talent. You got, you got the guys that are hungry to win. Nobody likes to lose. Um, so now you just got to find a way to, to, to hone in on the small things and, and find a way to win those games. Lastly, Reggie Bush told me the other day that the thing that he's noticed most about Detroit in general is, you know, the type of people that come from here, the hardworking people. What have you noticed about this town in your short stays here so far? I definitely think that's true. I mean, the, the people here work extremely hard. The fans have been out here every day. It's been open. Um and that's one thing you know about the city. Like you said, it's, it's a hard-working city. And I, I was talking to my friend the other day, and it was like, bro, it, it, it's meant for, for you to come here because that's, that's who you are. I mean, all your life you've had to be that hard-working guy to just overcome all obstacles and all circumstances to get to where you are. And now with the city going through what it's going through, the people here are still working hard. And it's our job to, to help rebuild this city, restore the, restore the roar in the city, 
and the fans have been great. Um, you know, I don't know what everybody's going through in their lives, but they've been great. They've came out here and support us, and so now we have to go out and do our job to try to, uh, you know, bring joy back to the city. Glad you chose here. Thanks for the visit. Thank you.